Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Social Distancing Social Club. I am one of your hosts, Steve Hoffs, that are excited about the show today. Very tired from the shows yesterday. Uh, we did three live shows from the Nowhere Comedy Club, uh, including uh, post-show meet and greets and Q&As and everything. I think I was on camera for nine hours yesterday. I'm a very tired man, but a very excited man, uh, because uh, our guest today used to play for the Mets. We'll talk about that in a second. You guys know how I feel about that. Anyway, uh, we've got a great show for you today. And as always, you can watch on uh, Twitch, you can watch on Facebook, you watch on YouTube. We're getting about 20,000 viewers an episode. It's been real exciting. Uh, this thing's working. Thanks for the support. If you want to uh, kick in a Venmo, you can do that top right of the screen. Also, you could PayPal us. Uh, you could do that at laughfromhome.com, which is also how you find out to be in our live video audience right here in our front row. And as always, Super Chat. We're going to have a great contest for you today. Uh, play the game as always. We love doing that. And we're happy to take all of your questions to amazing standups as well. And so with that, Let's introduce one of the other members of the quarantine. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ben Glaib. Hello, everybody. Thank you for that one kazoo sounding applause and the other of you as well. <laughs> <laughs> great to be with you guys. I hope you all have had a great two days. We haven't been with you here on the SDSC in 48 hours. It feels like a lifetime because it has been because time moves slowly like molasses during the end days. But then sometimes also moves fast. Like I can't tell if these three weeks have been nine weeks, 122 weeks, or five days. No sense of time. <laughs> you regain your sense of smell, you lose your sense of time. You win some, you lose some. Great to be with you, Isolation Nation. It is wonderful to be here. An exciting show is upon us. Um, it's great to see Queen Rachel looking like her usual self again. Hello, Queen. Hey, Ben. And uh, it's great to see King Bowers looking like the king that he is, far from the camera, so distant. He's like a bystander in his own. Show. I don't know what else to do. Ben, I, I don't by. know. I don't know what to do. I can do it like this, but then I can't see my face when it comes to me. Can you see my head? Is that, that better? Perfect. Way better. Right. You also could move a table. It's the apocalypse. Are you afraid to adjust your living room setup? It's Chris Bowers, everybody. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ben. See, I, on my phone, I can just see my mouth, which is very dissettling, but that's okay. Uh, hey, I'm actually celebrating for real today. My album dropped today, BowersAlbum.com. You can check it out. Uh, if we sell 32 today, we can be in the top five of iTunes. So uh, don't let me be embarrassed and only sell five. That would be sad. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here. We had a great show. Uh, John Zalea is here. Uh, Kelsey Cook is here as comics. We're going to have a great time. So settle in. Let's do it, everybody. I'm uh, also convinced that Ben was just trying to get Bowers to move so close that we wouldn't even see him. Like, I think that was the goal. <laughs> I want it would just Bowers be to one be patch of tuxedo jacket. jacket. Yeah. Yes. It would just, I we want would just, just see... pocket square. <laughs> just, just, just jacket and beer. All right. With that, it is time to introduce uh, our special guest. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, met this guy uh, back when I was doing stuff for Mets Live. We did a very, very fun segment together. Uh, a gamer, both on and off the field. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, pitcher Jerry Blevins, everybody. Jerry Blevins! Woo! Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank Jerry, you very much will... for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. You you did the most fun thing that anyone did on uh, on Mets Live. You did what, because... What is that? So uh, it was right after Noah Syndergaard had a cameo on Game of Thrones. And I asked you what show you would want to be on. And you said, oh, also Game of Thrones. And then I just figured I'd take a shot. I didn't know you. I just took a shot. And I was like, well, could, you know, what would you like to play? You said The Night's Watch. And I was like, can we see your audition right now? And without missing a beat, you just got super serious. And it was like a Night's Watchman. And it was amazing. It was so, I, like, I have trouble telling the story without laughing. Because I tried to, like, get real serious like you did. Because you just kind of looked down and just looked up all stone-faced. It was, it was fucking great. It was awesome. Hey, and, uh, we, well, that's what we do. We have fun. You can't take yourself too serious. Uh, I still am waiting. I guess uh, you. I could pretend like I was in that super dark episode, maybe. Like I was a part of that. <laughs> Nobody would know either way. But uh, I never, I never made it. <laughs> yeah, you were like, I was. You didn't. You didn't see me. Be like, we didn't see anyone. <laughs> You know that, yeah, that I mean, I was the, there. I was on the screen like twenty minutes. Nobody, nobody knew a word, and yeah. not, not one person said, "Hey, that was you." So. Yeah. Third, third torch on the left, a thousand yards out. That was Jerry. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, I can <laughs> easily blend in as a torch, that or at least a spear. I'm like uh, super tall and skinny, so nobody would know one way or the other. 
<laughs> yeah, you could do you could play White Walker, but without the mustache, you have to shave the stash. <laughs> yeah, we just we'll just put like some ice crystals on this baby. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Now, uh, for our viewing audience, if you guys want to uh, ask a question, uh, whether it is a general question or a specific question of Jerry, uh, you know, kick it in the uh, kick it in the comments. You can throw in the super chat; we'll definitely notice it. Or you can Venmo us; we'll definitely notice that. Or PayPal, or all the usuals, uh, everything like that. So, uh, so Jerry, you're a free agent right now. Is is that like? <laughs> did the does the quarantine kind of stop that business from happening? Uh, it's a it's. A- actually illegal for them to now hire me because we are in a roster freeze and so they i was with the giants in spring training and they released me right before the rosters freeze so i literally can't get a job right now so i'm just you know out playing catch in a in a, in a field with no end in sight so you know uh it's a little bit complicated a little bit um confusing you know from a um, professional standpoint but you know, what can you do? There's, there's, you know, real things happening in this world and uh, me not having a team to play for at this moment is, you know, minimal compared to, to what other people are doing. So I'll uh, just go about my business like I have a job and maybe I'll just sneak in and, and show up to a spring training and be like, hey, I thought you guys signed me. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, just, major, just little, little major, major, major league Willie Mays Hayes. You just run out on the field and beat the guy in the, the yeah, team. I wish I were fast. On the team. Yeah. <laughs> Ben, how am I? You, you made a comment. How am I distance wise from the screen? Am I okay? That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. a great question. I think your distance is pretty solid. You're at least Good. centered. Bowers is somehow just drifted back again, and he's to the left. So just, I, I'm more comfortable this way, Ben. The more, they, the more they see my face, the less people like me. So if I can be a little further away, so my face is that's, blurrier. That's then... honestly the the most popular opinion you've shared since, uh, since all your unpopular opinions. <laughs> Yeah, Bowers' mission is to be as far back as someone from that Game of Thrones episode. So, <laughs> all right, I'll move it again. Jerry, here's my question: uh, How is your wife being a bullpen catcher? Is she bullshit, or just can she catch a little bit? Are you are, are she uh, the she... signs? I, I just imagine you guys in a field and like either one, like how's the marriage going? That's really my question. Uh, well, you've got two small kids, you said, and you got yep. trapped in a in a room. I mean, how's this? Uh, you know, how's it going? I've got two two boys under two. Uh, one just turned five months. He's just now starting to be mobile. So he's almost self-sufficient. We can just put him down, let him go wherever he wants. He'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it's going great. It's, it's, I'm actually playing catch. There's a couple of ball players out here um, that are kind of in similar situations. A lot of guys live in Arizona. And so uh, the baseball part's easy. So I don't have to ask my wife to get into a catcher stance. <laughs> uh, and and try to block balls at all. Uh, she's got enough going on. So as far as the marriage goes, we're doing a lot better than than most. So I just I imagine mean, a wife. Like, I'm, I'm just I'm just imagining a wife catcher and the husband pitcher. And she just shake. He just shakes off everything she wants. He wants him to do. He's like no. She would, she would no, be. I no. think I think she would be a lot more like no. You need this is the curveball. You need to throw it. I'd shake and she'd be like that's it. All right, just bring it. Whatever whatever you want. I think she would be tough on me. <laughs> Do you, uh, when, when playing catch with, with other, with other dudes right now, do you sanitize the ball between every throw? Are you just washing your hands after the session to catch? What's the strategy? Not touching your face? Yeah, no, that's, it's, that's a great question. We're actually, you know, we're being about as cautious as, as can be um, when you're actually, you know, the baseball itself is going back and forth. We don't lick our fingers like normally we would, you know, for grip, we're just kind of, you know, doing the best we can, staying about, you know, we, we keep our distance from each other. Uh, the other guys I'm throwing with have families too. So we're trying to do the best thing, you know, the best for our family and for, for everybody, but we're also trying to, you know, keep ourselves in shape with if, if and when the season starts back up, you know, hopefully uh, soon, but we want to be ready to go too. So we're, 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 we're confused as anybody else, but we're trying to do the best thing. So we're, we're, <laughs> we're doing the best we can. Well, that's, and just, that's particularly tough because there are some pitchers who, if they can't lick their fingers or spit on their hands, they don't have anything. So yeah, this has kind of been better for me because I'm like one of the the rare pitchers that don't doesn't use any like grip or you know extra you know spin. I'm just an old fashioned like just give me the ball. Uh, so this is you know this would have helped me. 
Yeah, that'd right. be that'd be like everybody finding out suddenly that steroids cause coronavirus and be like, well, I guess we're gonna have to even the playing field. <laughs> Yeah, or maybe I could just pretend like I, you know, I have it and lick my fingers very noticeably and put it on the ball. Nobody's going to want to touch that thing. So I, yeah. I it <laughs> umpire puts a new ball in play every single time. <laughs> How many? Which, which 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 works till somebody hits it and then none of your outfielders or catch it, then you're fucked. But I get the point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll 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 yeah we'll we'll work on this. We'll sit ball it. How, we do, many, uh, how many throws? I just have one more technical question on that. How many throws, roughly, do you throw back and forth when you're just, you know, playing catch? Uh, I don't. We don't really uh, count the throws. Well, I could put it together. We do like ten or fifteen from sixty feet, ninety feet, one twenty, you know, one forty, and then back down to sixty feet. So you know, like fifty throws ish. It's like every day. Because my thought on that was just this might be a little tedious, but if you really wanted to have no contact, I know teams don't have a shortage of, of balls. Why don't you just have a bucket with you on wheels or whatever next to you, and each time you catch it, put the ball on the ground, grab a new one, and throw it across. You'd never have to yeah, touch I mean, the same there's ball. There's, there's uh, a good friend of mine that's living in the Bay Area. He, he drove once they shut down spring training. He drove home, and he's literally throwing against the fence. So, you know, I grew up in Ohio. And my off season, especially as a minor leaguer, where I couldn't afford to go to a nicer facility, I threw my garage into a tarp. So you know things can be done um, the, the best you can, but you know we're I can't really do anything here in a rental place. I don't want to damage anybody's <laughs> <laughs> anybody's property. Right. And so you know we're making things happen. You do the best you can with what you're given, and then go from there and be smart about it. Yeah, I uh, used to uh, I used to throw against a wall also, but I was throwing like 55. So the wall didn't really mind. <laughs> yeah, the ball and the wall were not harmed in the, in the making of Steve, Steve's catch game. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, by and, the way, and, shout and, out to uh, – sorry, Bowers, which is real quick. Shout out. We've got, uh, we've got some people joined us in the, uh, in the front row here in the live video audience we haven't said hello to yet. Uh, so we appreciate you coming in. We've got Chrissy, Carrie, Scott, and Tony. Thank you so much for joining us. If other people want to join us on future episodes, you can do that at laughfromhome.com. Sorry, Bowers, what were you saying? Uh, I was going to say that, unfortunately, Ben, I don't think the Mets have balls enough for that, but uh, I was going to Mets joke about how the Mets don't have the balls and don't sign anybody. I don't know. I, I'm just making fun of the Mets. How dare you? How yeah, dare I'm you? A Red, <laughs> I'm a Bowers, Reds fan, so I can't, I, can't, I can't talk. The Reds are wor way worse than the Mets, so, you know. Bowers, know. maybe try and just get further from the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so uh, Rachel, well, do we have anything? Do we have any chats uh, coming in? We should uh, we should talk about because we did have we did have a Venmo already come in, and it's actually for Queen Rachel. Uh, so we had a Venmo. This was Jonathan Sadowski sent in five bucks and said, "This is for Queen Rachel," and says it's her money, and then said uh, in parentheses, "Her money." Still making fun. Uh, the viewers are still making fun. <laughs> still making fun of her for not. So Jerry. <laughs> Wait, this happened the other day. Uh, we had Chris Rankin, the actor who played Percy Weasley in the Harry Potter series, on the show. So people were asking Harry Potter questions. And uh, and I, Rachel has not, I don't think, has seen Harry Potter or heard of it. And so she uh. pronounced Hermione as Hermoon. Hermone. Uh, or Hermone. Hermone. Oh, yeah, it was Hermone. Hermone. It was Hermone. Hermone. And uh, the fans and us, have, we've been having a lot of fun with that ever since. Yeah. So she took, a, she took a day off hoping it would not follow her around. But no, nope, <laughs> nope, <laughs> First minute you were here, baby. Yeah, she's, the, she's the last person that's never heard of Harry Potter. I, think, I didn't know that still existed. I've heard of it. Know. I've just never seen it or read it or any of that. So same here, Rachel. I'm with you on that. I've. But did you. All the, what? Did you know how to pronounce it? Uh, yes, I did know that it was Hermione oh. from the from the uh, Happy Popper series. It, it's Hermione. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what I think actually is funnier is imagining Rachel reading all the books and pronouncing it Hermione every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> turned it into. She's basically turned it into a, uh, a a an erotic novel, and then Hermione entered the hall. <laughs> Slowly wandered towards the broomstick. What was she doing with that? Let's just say she was riding it. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, ben, are you telling me Harry Potter has not been an erotic novel this whole time? I've been I've been reading it wrong. I'm sorry, guys. I my whole worldview is blown. 
Yeah, she thought it was. She thought it was. She thought it was Harry Peter. She thought it was Harry Peter. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. What secrets are in the chamber? All right. So, uh, guys- Rachel, let's go to uh, let's go to some uh, comments and questions. What do we got coming in? I've uh, got a lot of shame for me coming in still, which is fun. <laughs> Uh, but you got five bucks. Totally worth it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are loving the baseball chat. Um, we've got uh, Cheryl Roper had said in YouTube she misses baseball. Um, we had a, a Facebook comment comment. Thomas Whitney said thank you for all the entertainment during this trying time. And we did have a super chat. Uh, Jalfi sent in five euros. Well, hold on, hold on. Not- sorry, just just one quick question, Rachel. The the comment, thank you for all the entertainment. Steve and I appreciate that. Any comments for Bowers? <laughs> <laughs> no, none. <laughs> uh, uh, Jalfi gave five euros and said, "I'm out early this time. It's one ten a.m. I wish you all the best. I hope you enjoy yourselves." Uh, thank you very much, Alfie. We appreciate that. Thanks for the continued support. What's the translation there from euros? What's the what's the how many is that? How many I, dollars? It's like five fifty. I think it's one point one. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Every oh, now and that's then, worth, that's worth the humiliation of of her moan. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I every now and then like uh, so we got you know we'll get we get people from all over the world watching and so people will donate in you know Canadian or Australian or New Zealand and uh, and you know we'll we'll joke about it we'll you know joke about the strength of the dollar on it and sometimes people get really offended like we've gotten some comments of people being like we're doing our best I'm like it's not your fault that Canada's money isn't worth as much it's not a reflection on you it's fine. You guys have a better lifestyle. You just your money just can't buy things. <laughs> the one time I was in Canada when the when the Canadian dollar went above the American dollar briefly, and yeah. not only were they incredibly happy, instantly they became they lost their politeness and became very American. Instantly they were all like, "Woohoo! Fuck you! Fuck everybody!" <laughs> <laughs> Cackling fools, eating cheese cheese puffs. It, it very quickly happened. Oh yeah, absolutely. I got a, I was, I was actually in Canada then as well. And uh, what I would always do when I would get, cause when for a while it was pretty close, you know, it would be like, you know, 0.95 or something. And uh, so I would always go to a casino to change money cause they wouldn't charge you the fee. They just want you to gamble there. So I would, you know, go to a casino, give them Canadian, they'd give me American back and they'd be fine. Um, and then I tried doing that when it was like, you know, 1.01 where Canadian was a little bit higher and they were like, absolutely not. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Come on. So the best part Your for dollars me are Canadian money. Crap. Yeah. You go, you go get some Canadian $2 coins or the gold ones and then you go to a strip club in Ohio where they don't know those aren't gold coins and live like a king. That's how you do it. <laughs> Every one of Bowers' piece of advice uh, is to go to a strip club in Ohio. That's it all ends with that. <laughs> Uh, Rachel, what else we got in the chat? Yeah, so we've got um, Becky Lynn uh, donated $50 to the show and said, thank you so much for all the laughs. You've been keeping us all sane and doing an amazing job. Let's go Mets, do good things. Thank you very much, Becky. Much appreciated that. And by the way, it's very possible that Jerry ends up on another team. He had already left the Mets, went to the Braves, much to my dismay, because I was like, how do I root for him on a team that I hate? I don't know how to do this. I was like, when, when, but the, here's, the, here's the thing about that. Like you guys, obviously, this is a job for you guys. Now, a lot of baseball players are still baseball fans growing up. Like, I know there are some guys who are like, I do this and I don't care about this. But I think the majority of you are probably like you had a team as a kid, right? I'd say everyone that I've talked to had a favorite team um, growing up. I mean, it's, it's you know, I don't, I'm not sure anybody's ever been like, yeah, I knew from the age of eight um, that baseball is going to be my job. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> You know, otherwise uh, it would be not not as fun to play. So everybody had a favorite team. I was an A's fan growing up. Um, I had a brother that's four years older than me that used to beat the crap out of me. And I remember we were in the World Series in 1990. It was the, he's a huge Red fan. And I was like, I'll take the other guys with the big muscles and the mustache. <laughs> and of course, nice. we got swept. I was an A's fan. We got swept. And uh, <laughs> yeah, 
Bowers, who was a Reds fan, remembers that. And so that was just another thing that my older brother could beat me up about. I just <laughs> love the idea that you pick your favorite. Like I picked the Mets because my dad was a Mets fan. My brother was a Mets fan. You know, we grew up in Queens. You picked the, you picked the A's out of spite. Like, that's great. You weren't, you weren't just like, you know, I think Eck is fun to root for. And like, you know, these are, and holy crap, Bob Welsh had a lot of wins. Like you, you were just like, oh man, I hate my brother. Let's be an A's fan. That's how it started. It was like, you know what? I want your team to lose. I'm picking the other team. And then like, you know, if, if you've ever followed the A's or remember baseball in that era, they were like the bad boys. You know what I mean? They were, they, they were the, the the long hair, mustache, big muscles kind of bad boys. Of the Dennis game. Eckersley, really, right? Really fun to watch. Yeah. Plus they've got the green, like Ben's rocking some green right now. Look how hot he looks. Thank you. <laughs> the green Thank you so gold. much. <laughs> the, the, white, right. the white cleats. Uh, there's something about it. Like now, now everybody can wear, you know, whatever color cleats you want, but for a long time, you know, they were team colors or black and the A's are rocking these white shoes. And it, it was like an honor. I remember the first time, uh, when I got there, they were like, all right, here's your white cleats. And it was like being handed, you know, a piece of history. Um, and they were like, all right, you can put these on. And I'm like, you know, very few people get to do that. And it was just, uh, just a fun part. And, and it's just a fun organization. They're very blue collar. The fans are great. So I'm, I'm glad I picked the team that I did. I haven't been as heartbroken as, as Steve might have been being a, a Mets fan. <laughs> we are the <laughs> The Mets are the sign curve of baseball teams. It is just <laughs> this highs and tremendous lows and a lot in the middle. Uh, I have a stupid well, question. I have a stupid question about pitching. I you know I used to pitch when I was a kid. No big deal. I got my game ball over there. Nine strikeouts and three endings, little league. Can't wait, wait, wait. Can we ball. just make sure that ball. Jerry knows? Can sure. we make sure that Jerry knows that he was, it was nine strikeouts and three innings over the course of a great deal of runs scored? I gave like up eight runs. I gave eight up eight runs during that same time, but there you go. <laughs> there you go. Giants, Ben, 9K in three innings. Uh, there's my signature uh, game ball. Team Broke team record, 1989. So I'm not trying to make you jealous, Blevins, make you jealous, Blevins, but, uh, you know, we both are very skilled <laughs> as a pitcher. But um, my question is, my speed kind of capped off at around – you know, like, like a Steve Hofstad or 55, maybe I could hit 60 miles an hour. Do you, as a pitcher, do you just naturally, you think, have an arm that just can throw a ball faster? Or is that just through learning technique and working out and getting better? You used to also only be able to throw 60 when you were, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. And then you just literally got up into the 90s. Yeah, so I think it's a little bit of everything. Like, obviously, naturally, you have to have – the athleticism it takes to throw a baseball. Like, I don't know if you've, you know, shooting a basketball is, you know, pretty athletic or, or, you know, playing football, but I don't know if you've ever seen an, an athlete from another sport throw out the first pitch at baseball. It, I think it's like 80% of them look completely awkward and uncoordinated when right. they throw a baseball. It's just a different kind of athleticism. Um, it's the only sport where a guy like me, who's 6'6", 185 pounds, and a guy like Bartolo Colon, who's six foot, 400 pounds, and we can do the same job. Like, it's, just, it's just different. That's what I love about it. I, I love how many people miss that. Like, that was amazing. Um, I, well, that sounded like a joke, jokes. but Bartolo really does but make 400 pounds. That's not even a joke. That's probably what he actually... Like he wasn't no, your there's speed. no way. He's, no, he's got to no be up at like 280. Yeah, but, your speed is like, but your speed is picked rock. up though? He's, he's, he's so much muscle underneath his like his layer that, I mean, that guy is a super athlete. Like I, I he can do that. the splits yeah. at his size. Like he's really strong. He's like more flexible than I am. Like we'll be stretching, like laying on the, like sitting on the ground with our legs spread out. And he'll just lean over and put his whole like front of his body on the ground, like a gymnast. He just laughs. He just he just lives it's his also, life. He's great. It's it's also the only sport where two men, while they're at work, are doing a great job when they lay in front of each other with their legs spread out and <laughs> spread in front of each other. That's pre uh, it but might, it's definitely still work. If by only I mean that's really every sport though. But that said, uh we're gonna do we're gonna do our game uh right before we start our game and then uh, and then we're gonna introduce our uh, our first comic. Um, I do want to point out, by the way, uh, Ben, just you showing that baseball to Jerry is the equivalent 
of when we were talking about how like an open micer or someone who's never done comedy is like, hey, can I tour with you? That's what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really do appreciate the appreciate like somebody's love for the game. Like it, I don't know if it's like uh, kind of like ironic that you have that ball, but it it's it's a moment for you to have like you love baseball and so i appreciate it as a fan of the game and somebody that you know that got to make a living doing it like i appreciate that i love baseball too oh hell yeah it's not ironic at all this is the athletic achievement of my life that and my ping pong trophy i have here from my high school tournament are the two pinnacles of my athletic achievement and i'm very very proud of them well good yeah, for you man oh i wanted to answer your question about like throwing yeah arms. so you have to naturally have like an ability like you know you come in you're like oh you've got a good arm that like is a starting line and then there's learning techniques and and like weight training and there's ways to build up your 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 uh, velocity but for the most part it's like you have it to start with and then how far do you want to take it so you yeah there's a limitation to how much you can do you know with the weights and and throwing programs and stuff like that how about actual uh, speed though so like in high school were you able to already throw like high 80s or were you like high 70s and you could literally get it into the 90s through training yeah so um i probably threw about the same as i do now like i'm 36 now so i'm like way old for this sport i'm like the old man in the clubhouse and uh, so like my my velocity has gone down but i've kind of like tapered off i'm now where i was in high school but i've learned you know, there was a peak up where, where I threw a lot harder and it's more through training and it's more consistency. Like being able to do it every day is a lot of weight training, a lot of video watching, making sure that you're doing an athletic, you know, athletic movement repetitively. It's being able to stay consistent. That's the, the strength part, but it's, you know, velocity was never my game to begin with. And especially in today's baseball game where there's so many guys that, that throw way harder than, than they did in, in the past. So. Well, well, so no, we've just learn a curveball. That would have been if I could tell you what to do. Learn a curveball and yes. throw left-handed. I, yeah, I left say, my, 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 guys, my, guys, my, we gotta. It's I, it's I, like a it's I, like half past. So uh, yeah, what we're gonna, I, I'm about, what we're I'm gonna, gonna do? I'm about to enter, I'm gonna introduce the game. I'm about to introduce. All right, the game. go for it. Anymore. I'm gonna introduce the game. I will say my greatest achievement was I hit a, a home run in the bottom of the ninth in MLB The Show on PlayStation about five years ago. That's the best thing <laughs> I've ever done. But. Uh, <laughs> Our game today is, if this is the way it works, $5 in the Super Chat or the Venmo or more. Uh, the, the, you don't, if you pay more, you don't get more of a chance of winning. But uh, whatever you want to give us is great. $5 is the minimum to be in the contest. Uh, the contest today is, what is the most embarrassing thing you've ever had to buy in person? What is the most embarrassing thing you've ever had to buy in person is the, is the uh, contest. Put that in the Super Chats, and we'll go from there. Uh, Rachel, do we have any Super Chats before we get into the first contest? Every time Bowers goes shopping for groceries. <laughs> <laughs> so someone's just like uh are you throwing a party and he's like no <laughs> uh what do, rachel do we have some super chats because we got some venmos coming in we do so jalfi gave another five euros and it's taken a stab at me rachel when you get around to reading harry potter please ask google's help with the names that's rude nice. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal knew it's Rudy. Five it's pronounced Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> um, Crystal knew one gave five dollars, and I'm from the Bay Area and moved to Mississippi six years ago. I love you all. Uh, Sean Chandler, five dollars. I miss baseball. Also, I paid for MLB.tv and watched several spring games, but now nothing. Go Yankees since '85. Oh, just a heads up. Uh, call them. You'll get your money back. They're refunding everybody. It's over a hundred bucks. So uh, call call them up and you'll get your money back. Nice. Um, and then two to rescue five dollars. Mets fan via the Rumble ponies. Hoping AA starts like MLB is planning to, so we can catch them too. Absolutely. Uh, we got a couple coming in on the Venmo side. So uh, we got ten bucks from Jan Johnson, a frequent supporter. Uh, says thanks all, uh, and then says this is for Steve because my kid is going to be watching his stand up over my shoulder on Easter. Nice. Uh, we've got a uh, ooh. This is they want to be anonymous, but a hundred bucks, and said uh, I just wanted to let you know how uh, how much is appreciated uh, and needed for everyone. I've watched the show uh, all but one since the start. Even attended Steve's show on Monday. I'm disabled, so going to a show is hard to do. Even if I didn't live in a small town of Southern Indiana, this is my favorite part of the day. Thank you all. 
Uh, well, thank you very much. We really appreciate the support. Um, you know, it's great to be able to do stuff like this. And then we got five bucks coming in from Brad Fredrickson and, and said, just bought Bauer's new album. Super excited to listen to it later uh, and sit wherever you want. So, <laughs> thank you. Fuck you, Ben. Thank you. That's yeah. not Ben. <laughs> Are we ready for a comic? Or we got more Ben Moser, Steve. Uh, let's do a comic. All right. We're definitely going to get demonetized for this episode on the replay. Uh, but we, uh, yeah, we love it. That was, I'm kidding. It was. It's a joke. It's a joke. Okay. Uh, it's also, just Wendell. Wendell's think... going to complain. Wendell will <laughs> What a what I a don't... great name, Wendell. That was beautiful. Thank it's you perfect. so much. <laughs> and I don't think you look that much like Jesse Rogers at all. You know exactly know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that, that porn search history. Now we all know what you watch, Ben. <laughs> I googled it. I googled it during your set surreptitiously. <laughs> this is the one time. You didn't even. <laughs> I was just gonna say like. I've never uh, done a show where people in real time could immediately go search that while they're still listening. To <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's at yeah. the club and people yeah. have to like wait till they're like walking by me. I have people walk by me in the merch line and go, hey, uh, what was the name of that porn star you said again? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> wait till the parking lot at least. Jesus Christ. <laughs> now, ben, ben did just Google that now, although when it came up, it was a visited link. Yes. So uh, we've, uh, <laughs> we're getting. That's what happens when you loan Steve Hofstad of your phone during long trips. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the tip jar is open, by the way. Uh, tip jar is open if you uh, enjoyed Kelsey's set. Uh, kick her a couple of bucks. Uh, you can Venmo, top right of the screen, PayPal, laughfromhome.com, or Super Chat. Uh, I know we've got a couple general ones coming in, so we'll read those as the tips come in for Kelsey. Uh, so uh, our favorite, Z Bunster, the biggest supporter of the show, throws in another 40 bucks and says, uh, great show last night and split this amongst the comics. So thank you very oh, much, Z. Thank you. We appreciate it, as always. Um, and Savannah Z. Martin, also a regular supporter of the show, throws in five bucks and says, if y'all don't leave my man Bowers alone, I swear. So thank you very much, Savannah. That's two for fuck Ben. So ben, fuck Ben two, Bowers fucking yes. Yeah, if you guys want to vote on which one of them is is wrong, that's how you do it. Um, please, please vote. But also, I guess now we know that during Kelsey's hilarious set, I was Googling porn and Bowers was creating fake profiles. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so uh rachel what do we got what do we got coming in on uh youtube yeah so we have um a comment from ford stars uh defending ben just said ben was just fact checking it yeah <laughs> thank you thank you very much i'm nothing if not a bear for detail i like to know about velocity of pitches what porn stars are what comedians i'm just i'm the show's fact checker yeah, there was also right, right, right. the weird part is though he didn't Google Jesse Rogers, he Googled gaping butthole. So it's just <laughs> the word gaping needs to be retired from porn because who's turned on by the word gaping? Every time I hear it, I'm like, oh no. Be <laughs> by that premise. Be like something horrible has happened. Get her medical attention. <laughs> gaping gaping is the exact like if there's a gaping hole in your house, you'd be like Quick, there's a gaping hole. Let's fix this. <laughs> uh, all right, what do we got, Rachel? We've got uh, Jalfi uh, tipped Kelsey $5 and said, great set. Thank we have um, Heather Scott tipped $10. Kelsey, fantastic set. Thanks, we have um, Helena Sutherland $5. Kelsey, great set. I couldn't stop laughing. I wish I could give more. Oh, thank um, you. We've got Greg Smith tipping $10 for Kelsey. Great set. Thanks, So guys. a lot of That's stuff so nice. coming in. That's yeah, so there's, nice. uh, there's a couple more just came in on, uh, on the Venmo also. Uh, Mark Millett threw in 30 bucks and said, uh, Kelseyville was funny. Um, and uh, <laughs> Megan Smith threw in 10 bucks and says, uh, tip for Kelsey, woot woot, great set. Thanks, so uh, yeah, a bunch coming so in. Wouldn't it be awesome if comedy clubs worked like this? Because then, yeah. like, because everyone knows the comic who gets off stage being like, I crushed it. We're just like, really? And like, then then we would know. Just be like, really? And then just point to the scoreboard and be like, you got tipped $1 and it was from, and you brought two people. And you only got tipped $1. <laughs> By the way, I, I did once. Yeah, I, I did once. Uh, I was I was judging a, a comedy contest where, uh, where someone in the finals 
uh, because he just kept bringing a ton of people, but he wasn't very good. But part of the thing counted for vote for audience vote. And so it was the finals. And uh, and he brought 12 people and he got 10 votes. It was the best. (laughs) 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 Two of his own people were like, I can't in good. I have integrity. I can't in good conscience. I mean, yeah. in fairness, in in fairness, I don't think just because you gave birth to Bowers, you have to vote for him. Yeah. <laughs> Kelsey, Kelsey, I loved your joke about spitting the bananas in the cereal. Now I've never had cereal or bananas, but uh, <laughs> one time, one time in college, I was at a bar. Uh, I was 22, and these girls were 20. There were three girls, and they wanted me to buy them uh, shots. And they and so I said, Well, here, I'll buy three shots. I'll pour them in a diet coke and mix around you guys can drink the drink the diet coke i was handing to you so i went to the bar and the guy was on to me so he's like uh i did three shots of, of vodka and a, and a diet he's like i need to see you do those shots all right now so i was like all right so i just and as i walked back i went and spit them all in the glass and shook up and gave it to me <laughs> <laughs> and then By the way, bowers great. every now and then bowers there's a story that like when you think should i tell this story i'm not sure <laughs> 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 I'm not the part of this is not the that's a great like, goddamn not. fucking story and fuck you guys okay you know what you know, you know why my no, listen, listen, listen no, fuck all of you you know why my jokes sometimes don't work and you two always do because I fucking laugh at you no matter what the fuck you say you dick no no Bowers <laughs> how about you appreciate the show and we just have a fucking time instead of fucking fighting what I can I think Bowers, the bartender... normally your stories are wonderful but wow. that was that's that a one in great particular. story I didn't know it was going to be on the last episode of this show. I didn't realize this was the end of it, but it looks like. Yeah, right? <laughs> In three weeks of me laughing and then calling me a dumbass. Yeah, I fucking snapped. I'm sorry. Here we, go. <laughs> we, all, we all have our roles. Ben's the fact checker. We all have our roles. Uh, by the way, a bunch more tips are coming always- in from Kelsey. Great uh, story you guys. End with the storyteller going, that's a great goddamn story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, I've told that story a hundred times in my life. It's only not gotten a laugh once, and that's right fucking now. That's why I'm mad. I don't know why I'm mad. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a fucking great story tell. that I've told my whole life. I've told this story for 24 fucking years, and the first time it hasn't gotten a laugh is right goddamn now. So fuck everybody, is all I'm saying. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I you can't sound tell like my he's really mad. Holy Christmas. shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the tips, everybody. All right, here we go. Uh, so uh, we got some Venmos coming in. Uh, Jane Stewart, a frequent supporter of the show, threw in five, uh, threw in 10 bucks, says uh, five bucks for Kelsey. Uh, maybe the best set I've seen on social distancing, social distancing, social glove. You're fantastic. Uh, and thank also, you. another five bucks for Queen Rachel, says she looks beautiful and she needs a win. So, uh, <laughs> I like that. Uh, uh, Julia Tatterleva threw in seven bucks and said, uh, uh, joke about, uh, Kelsey, the alter ego is really good. Uh, Tyler Stevens, uh, paid two fifty says Kelsey loved the jokes. Uh, Peter Retzlaff says, uh, thank, uh, throws in 20 bucks says, thanks for giving me an excuse to laugh. Great set Kelsey. And then Ellen Shaw threw in five bucks, freaking support of the show and says for Kelsey, great set, bud. Kelsey, by the way, I I literally every once in a blue totally bite off banana bites and drop them in the milk. Oh, I'm so glad you do. Yeah, I totally do it. And every time I'm grossed out by myself, and like as I'm dropping, I just in my head, I'm like, it's about to be in milk and back in my mouth. It's okay. It's It's all the same. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. it is the mama bird like regurgitating. It just. Mm -hmm. It's one less way, dish for me to wash. I mean, it makes that's sense. That's exactly right. That's exactly yeah, right. One less, one less dish. Is a knife a dish at this point? Or is it just- <laughs> she cuts her bananas <laughs> with plates. It's very weird. She cuts her bananas with plates. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I, I know I'm spoiled. I'm living in luxury with a dishwasher, so you could just throw in a yeah. knife, and it's about the same. But you know, know. If, if you're if you don't have a dishwasher, you have to do this and then that to wash it. So that's really well, let Kelsey defend herself there. Yeah, you know, I know that you can't relate to us peasants anymore, Steve, with our <laughs> non-dishwashers, but like, also sometimes I'll get desperate if I don't want to do the teeth, I'll just use a spoon to do the bananas, because then I will also be using that spoon. It's a fuck, you know. Oh, that's yeah. that's efficiency. I'm all about that. That's a absolutely. Like that one. Yeah, absolutely. If yeah. you can, yeah, if you can save yourself the trouble without yeah. being gross and bird-like, <laughs> yes, I'm about it. I'm all about it. <laughs> Uh, Rachel, what else we got coming in? 
Yes, we had a couple more tips. Um, Sean T Chandler, tip Kelsey, $5. Great set. You're too beautiful to be called bud. Oh, you're <laughs> very sweet. You have not seen me without makeup, my friend. I don't think you'd say that. <laughs> he also just called the rest of us bud. So. <laughs> uh, Jalfi threw in another two euros, um, gets a dollar tip with the you owe me two drinks attached. I'm not... I don't, I don't we, either. Is that, we, is, that a, is that a drink ticket? Is that drink tickets? Is that a drink ticket? Oh <laughs> yeah, that might be, or that two, might be or, like a two, or drink, two drink minimum or a two drink minimum joke. I don't know what that is, but yeah. that's a good joke. Either way, we appreciate it. Yeah. He, he tips a lot, so we'll take it. We had some generals come in. Um, Jeremy Day uh, tipped $5 and said, hey guys, I can't stick around tonight, but I love you all. We've got um, CJ Mustang, $5. He has a question for Jerry. As a kid, I watched the baseball bunch with Johnny Bench and fell in love with the game. What kind of baseball memories made you love the game? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, I think most of it is as much of a rivalry as I talked about with my older brother. Um, my brother was a, my favorite moment is my brother was a senior in high school when I was a freshman. And in order to get on the varsity team, there was only an opening at first base. And so I'm like a late bloomer. So I'm like five foot three in my freshman year of high school, but my brother's out working with me, throwing me one hops. We're on the, on the pavement in the middle of the street. He's just throwing short hops to me uh, every day, every night until, you know, until the, the tryouts come on. And I ended up playing a little bit of first base with my big brother in high school so uh i appreciate the question and and i hope that that answers it that's really cool i, like yeah, that. I had a memory i had, I had, I had a similar Jerry. i had a similar but opposite experience no joke my uh second to last season playing little league i wasn't great despite my incredible pitching arm and so i was three years older than my brother and in little league we were on the same team for my last season oh my god <laughs> <laughs> do you guys are, how old were you in little league <laughs> i was like 12 this year and he was nine it was like the last year before you go into senior leagues or whatever and it was not it was not the highlight of my of my pride you guys, he's like reverse that daniel you monte you remember that yeah. <laughs> Wait, was, were you 12 when you struck out nine nine-year-olds? Is that what fucking yeah. <laughs> Take that away from him, Bowers. Don't take that moment. <laughs> hey, so, so, uh, I, have a, I, have a question, I have a question for Jerry real quick. Jerry, so yeah. as a professional athlete, we talked earlier about being Bengals. We're both Bengals fans. And so, you know, there's times where the Bengals suck. And as a normal person who's never had any athletic ability – Eh, who am I to talk shit about a professional athlete? But as a professional athlete, you ever watch a guy and go, what the fuck, dude? Come on, run fast. What, I mean, do you, have, do you have a, like, when you watch other pros as a pro, do you think about it differently? I do. Uh, I always, I'll still say, you know, what the heck were you thinking? Or what are you doing? Pay attention. I'll never say it publicly, though. I'll never go on Twitter and dog somebody. I'll never, you know, say anything, boo, at a sporting event. Um, I have absolutely loved my time in New York. Uh, I cherish every moment of it. It's like such a blessing to be able to play in such a market like that. But some people can't handle that instant feedback. You know what I mean? What you guys do as comedians, you kind of do the same thing that we do. Like we know right away if our set was terrible as we're walking off the field and we right. hear and you hear the boo. <laughs> like <it's, laughs> so, you know, I respect that. I respect you guys uh, so much and what you guys do because it's very similar. Um, and so I personally know what it feels like to get booed. Uh, so I don't do it. I don't talk crap on, on the internet, but um, I definitely am like, what the heck were you doing? Hold on to the ball or something like that. It's, it's definitely a thought that goes through my head because as a fan, you can still hold your athletes up to a certain standard. You can want them to play hard. So. Well, can I, can I just say also, I very much appreciate you comparing, you know, what we do, but I would say, I mean, as a baseball player, you, you guys have to deal with possibly getting booed by 40,000 people at once. And like, we have to own, we only get booed by like 2000 tops, you know? So. I, yeah, I'll tell you, so, and, and, and so <laughs> I played in, in Oakland when we were really bad from like 07 until we were, we were good in 12 and 13, my last two years there. But in 07 to 09, we're in a Coliseum that holds like 60,000 people for football. And there's like 1200 people there. 
And so <laughs> I'm like on the mound getting, getting beat up and I can, I'm getting hit around a little bit. And I hear a guy like, man, this guy sucks. Get him a burger. And I'm like, I'll step off the mound. Like, I can hear you, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier when it's, when it's a full stadium because it just becomes noise. Whereas when it's a small arena, you're like, I can, you're looking into my eyes, guy. <laughs> There is one there is one way though really where we're the exact opposite of baseball players like if you leave the mound and the crowd thinks you were hilarious you know you did really bad whereas if, we're hilarious, the best we can. if they're laughing I probably did something that's going to embarrass my entire family so you're right on yes. that uh, I will, um, All right we got a couple more this, this this is the least amount of cuss words from a guy with a mustache like that in the history of that mustache <laughs> So good job. Yeah. With your right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've you got a couple more. Forever. We've got a, a couple more come in. Uh, two, two Venmos in support of Bowers. So uh, Jane Stewart throws in another $5 and says, for Bowers, clearly also needs a win. You're loyal as fuck, man. We love you. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I know Bowers is getting all this shit, and he's like, this, this on the day of the release of my album? <laughs> 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 you really feel bad for me. Bowersalbum.com. Bowersalbum.com. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that I'm actually funny in front of people to laugh at me that are on the app. Yeah. So okay. uh, James Corbin also throws in five bucks, says just logged in, missed Bowers' story, but he was crying so hard about nobody laughing that here's five dollars anyway. Uh oh, thanks for uh thanks for doing this. Love you guys. Um <laughs> and then uh uh Ashley Wallace says, if I didn't know any better, Steve looks stoned. Uh, LOL, huge fan. Wish I could give more. I'm so happy you're doing what you're doing. Keep it up. Uh, yeah, obviously I'm not stoned. This is just what it looks like when I am on camera for nine hours the day before until three in the morning. So that's just how, that's what I think. I think that's why I look like this. Otherwise I might just look like this and that's, that's scarier. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> hey Bowers, is, uh, is your, is your bar three shot bar joke on the album? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Not on this one. <laughs> I hear it. Oh, that was one of the best roasts we've ever had on the show. <laughs> just so, I felt like, bad. I felt. I feel bad. No, no. That was fantastic, Mister. Uh, I no. never see anything in public that's mean. Okay, whatever. There must. Be. <laughs> uh, let's go to our. We should go to our next comic, right? We got. I think we should. Yes, let's, do it. Yeah. let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, this next comic. Okay. Uh, also, oh yeah, sorry, wait, wait, Kelsey, 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 are you still there? Kelsey, yeah. are you still there? Can we yeah, do the plugs here. real quick? Let's do the plugs for Kelsey and say goodbye to Kelsey, and then we'll bring in John. Is that good? So Kelsey, yeah. where do we find you? Other than night on NBC, where else can we find you? Yeah, yeah, please watch A Little Late with Lily Singh tonight on NBC. I'll be doing stand-up on there. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Kelsey Cook Comedy. Uh, Twitter's at Kelsey Cook. My website is KelseyCook.com. And I have a foosball web series on YouTube called Wrist of Fury, where I play foosball against other comedians. And I have a podcast called Self Helpless. So go find all the things. Thank you guys. I for actually having wanted to ask Kelsey one quick question about that yeah. before you go, because we're in the presence of two professional athletes. You're a pro foosball player. Yeah. And how did that skill come to you? And why did you decide to run with foosball as your, as, as your thing? Yeah. So um, my parents met playing in a professional foosball tournament. So my parents are <laughs> pro players. <laughs> So I had no choice. Like I literally wouldn't exist if it weren't for foosball, which is so sad. <laughs> Carol, your, your mom's your mom's a bad goalie, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> In the hole. Oh, I don't. Well, I don't want to talk about. That. <laughs> I won't. Yeah. All right. I've I'll, always I, thought I'll stop myself. <laughs> oh no! Who knew Out of respect. foosball get you laid? I've That's always impressive. thought that. <laughs> only by other only by other foosball players does foosball get you laid. That's how that happens. So. I've always thought that probably people who are pretty good at foosball would all would, would be uh kebab cooks. You know what I mean? It's like the only meal. <laughs> He's also on a long stick with several <laughs> Do you think those skills are related at all? Um, you know, Ben, I haven't put that to the test. I will say that um Pro foosball players are generally uh, either real bad at hand jobs or like real good at hand jobs. 
depending what you're into, that's either like a fetish or like a trip to the emergency room. So all of a sudden during a hand job, someone I'm sorry. during a hand job during a hand job, someone just yells out, no spinning. <laughs> if you're giving a hand job like this, no, yeah, you just, should be arrested yeah. immediately. <laughs> How are I, we supposed I don't... to do it? <laughs> in, a, in a very different way, when I get hand jobs, it's similar to foosball in that there are about 22 emotionless people staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, uh, thank you, Kelsey Cook. And I'm gonna vouch. Fantastic, Hi, uh, absolutely Thanks fantastic podcast uh, with uh, two other two other hilarious people, uh, Taylor Thompson and Delaney Fisher, her co-hosts. A uh, self helpless yeah. is a wonderful podcast. Please go check it out. Uh, and with you. that, Bowers, uh, let's introduce our next comic. Bye, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, our next comic is also, and they all are, an amazing comedian. Uh, I think he's one of the smartest people I've ever met. Uh, he's one of Comedy Central's comics to watch. Give her John Ozale, everybody. John Ozale. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Can't wait to make one tenth of the tips that Kelsey just made. Uh, <laughs> be, uh, largest disparity. I'll have to check the data after <laughs> the show. Uh, but yes, although weirdly, at the coincidence, my parents also met at a professional hand job competition. So it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been the hooking. I can understand the pairing now. It's all coming together. <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, it's <laughs> great to tell jokes to people again. Uh, the last live show I did was weirdly in uh, Bangkok, Thailand, at the beginning of March, like a week before this whole thing started. And I, while I was there, it was just like such a surreal experience to like look around and realize that like this is the virus that's gonna kill the sex tourism industry. Uh, that's a strange, <laughs> strange irony to uh, Thailand over there. But yeah, it's good. Um, <laughs> what about me? Me, I am uh, 37 years old, despite the fact that I have a, you know, baseball jersey on and a pendant in my room. <laughs> but, uh, um, but I, I don't live like a 37 year old, obviously. Uh, that's because I lost six years of my life to drug abuse. Uh, that's right. Uh, cocaine addiction was the topic of my thesis in graduate school. It's, uh... <laughs> PhD. I got my PhD in neuroscience, which means I think I might be the only person alive to handle pure uncut cocaine every day for six years and come out with less money. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, it took me getting my doctorate to learn that the worst way to experiment with drugs is to literally experiment with drugs. <laughs> uh, and a few, uh, a few years after I uh, got my doctorate, I stopped research and I st uh, became a college professor adjunct uh, at an online university. Uh, <laughs> not very prestigious, but they're all online now. So I was ahead of the curve. Uh, and I feel like I'm with this a lot of the same issues <laughs> that like a real college professor would face, right? Because at the, the last day uh, of the course, I would always get a flood of emails from students who couldn't finish their assignments on time and wanted an extension. And uh, to an email, they all started out the exact same way. It was always, dear professor, I've had a personal emergency. Uh, and I wanted to cut him off right there and say, yeah, no, I believe you. I know you've had a personal emergency. Uh, you're going to college online. <laughs> be, be very surprised if things were going well for you right now. <laughs> but uh, don't worry, I have a PhD and I'm teaching college online. So, <laughs> is also my personal emergency. <laughs> so yes, of course you can have extension on your assignment. I'm not even going to read it. Everyone gets a B. 
<laughs> I believe that is the slogan of the university. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> I will say uh, it's it's great. I've, uh, I have to pick up my girlfriend right after the show. It's great to like be with someone right now. Like dating was horrible for me, even when we were allowed to go outside. Uh, the last date I went on before I met with a girlfriend uh, was with someone she uh, wanted to know if we we're compatible, pretty standard uh, so far. But she didn't want to know based on the personality I was demonstrating in real time. Uh, she wanted to know if we we're compatible based on the month I was born. You know, pretty common phenomenon uh, in the dating world, unfortunately. My zodiac sign, if I knew much about it. And here's the thing, I don't. And I refuse to learn. Because for one, and I cannot emphasize this enough, it is not real. Most of the time, completely arbitrary. I hope that's been very clear to everyone. Uh, and two, I am a Taurus and we are stubborn. Uh, <laughs> uh, not compatible after all uh, i will say like i have been getting into a little more spiritually stuff i uh downloaded one of those meditation apps right to be uh on this uh, so every day at noon i tell it no and <laughs> I gotta say, it's it's pretty relaxing. A five stars. I'm taking control of my day. I feel empowered. Excellent way to start your morning. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I also uh, I, I went to see uh, what was it a therapist for the first time last year. I recommend it for everyone. It's uh, very healthy. It'd be a teleconference for one now. Um, and I made up my, uh, my first ever appointment. I called up the clinic and the receptionist wanted to know if I wanted to see a male or female therapist. And I said, I don't really care. I, I hadn't thought about it. And I thought about it for two seconds and I said, female, of course. Do you think I would be vulnerable with an adult man? <laughs> I would rather share my fears with a coyote. <laughs> I think you should understand that my inability to talk to other men is the reason I need therapy. <laughs> 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 to wrap it up here in a second. Uh, yeah, the, uh, what was it? Um, actually, like one of the things that uh, made me so much better at reducing our anxiety was just stay off Facebook. That's all it is, just stay off Facebook. Um, now Facebook, all it is, is a friend's birthday app to me. You know, it's, uh, it's what FB stands for now. Uh, so I just go on <laughs> wish people a happy birthday, avoid them if necessary. Uh, or like, but I can't even just say happy birthday. It feels so lame. Right. So I just wanted to make sure they're reading it. And I just say like, eat shit and die. Or, uh, my favorite thing to say is, uh, God is dead. Uh, <laughs> clearly he is. Uh, but like, what's great is that like, um, I, you know, it's a fun joke what I have with other mostly comedians, um, but that's not the only people who can read it. Uh, in fact, I found that, um, that makes it even funnier because then you get someone ant to comment on it. It's like, God is not dead. God is alive. And he is my savior. And then I get to respond with my favorite rebuttal, which is if God is not dead, then why is he in heaven? <laughs> what they call in the bible a checkmate <laughs> i'll just say last thing i used to think that the uh like religion was just wrong now i realize it was right for the the fact that you're not supposed to have sex before marriage makes way more sense when you factor in that back in biblical times people got married at 14. Yeah, I'll say it. A little bit less impressive that Mary was a virgin. I didn't have sex. I didn't have sex till I was 20. Where are my candles? That's what I'm saying. That's, that's all for my set. I don't know. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Thanks, everyone. All right. Tip jar is open. If you want to, uh, if you want to tip Jono and help him catch up to Kelsey.
Uh, you can uh, Venmo, I'll stop right at the screen. You can PayPal, laughfromhome.com. And of course, you can Super Chat. And we got a big one already starting it off. Uh, we got uh, Scott Ashcraft threw in 50 bucks and says, well done, Jono, I giggle. So you already got uh, you already got one to start. That closes the gap pretty quickly. Uh, in your face, Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we also have a general one that came in uh, meanwhile, which is uh, Z Bunster threw in another 10 bucks and says for Bowers for a new gasket. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, and Rachel, do we have anything coming in on the on the chat? We do. So we've got um, Jalfi uh, donated a couple different times. I think $7. He said the cocaine addiction bit. It was fucking beautiful. And then he said, uh, in regarding to the online teaching bit, Ben's version of the online teaching would have ended with everyone gets the D. <laughs> we have uh sean chandler uh tipped five dollars and said jonah you have to come you have to support my cocaine alumni thanks for the laughs <laughs>, <laughs> or he has to support yeah, yeah. solidarity um, yeah. heather scott tipped ten dollars and said the horoscope bit was gold um and then we had a comment, uh, YouTube user, I'm God, said, I'm not dead. Quit saying I'm dead. That <laughs> 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 works. Can't uh, social distance uh, yourself from me. <laughs> we, also have, uh, we also have some coming in on the Venmo now. Tyler Stevens throws in 250 and says, for Jono, the God is dead. Uh, God is not dead joke was golden. Uh, and uh, Brad Fredrickson threw in 10 bucks says for Jonah, such a great set. Thank you uh, so much for joining us, man. Thanks. Excellent. Uh, Rachel, anything else? Are we caught up? We had another tip come in from Greg Smith, um, $5. Jono set, uh, it was a bit awkward to watch while taking a work break, but from teaching at an online university. <laughs> <laughs> And then we had some uh, generals come in. So Carrie uh, gave $5 on behalf of Stacy Luby and said she has a shag, marry, or kill. Mm -hmm. Coldstone Steve Austin, Medea. Coldstone and Steve Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Stone Cold. Oh my God. <laughs> I just really want. Did you have a television? We didn't raise money to send you a television. <laughs> oh, you never oh heard of <laughs> Cold Stone Steve Austin. <laughs> Wait, by the way, guys, guys, Cold Stone Steve Austin has a big rivalry with Hulk with a uh, Hulk Hogan boss. <laughs> <laughs> He just, he just smashes two cones together and then smashes ice cream all over his face. It's awesome. <laughs> By the way, I expected more on Hulk haagen but I'll take it. All right. Stone Cold Steve Austin. That one. Medea. Okay. And... Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh my God, what a weird combination of people. Oh, um, I'm going I'm 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 to eat Cold Stone Steve Austin. Wait, what's the question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this whole time he could smell what The Rock was cooking. It was <laughs> I'm never gonna stop laughing. I'm never gonna stop laughing. Again. Rachel, I love you so much. No. Uh, After also, the next <laughs> also, I gotta say, you have accidentally given Coldstone a great commercial campaign. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, you could just have like them trying to make their ice cream their way, and then Steve Austin just trying to tackle it, and then. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. So okay. Steve Austin, Medea, and Dog the Bounty Hunter. I can't even. I can't even think straight after that one. I have. I'm gonna pass on this. <laughs> 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 I'm too hard. I can't. <laughs> 
I've literally never seen you speechless, Steve. This is the first time you've never had a quick answer in 15 years of comedy or however long you've been. You've been I, I'm speech. sure I have it. I just don't want to because I don't want my brain to stop thinking about this right now. <laughs> my favorite wrestler was Ric Flavor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the Undertaker. Or, or the Undertaker. <laughs> People are commenting. They're saying, Dear God, Rachel, just when you thought you'd recover from her moan. <laughs> uh, uh, we have more super chats. Um, All right, let's 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 do some more super chats. Should I try to do that one? I guess I'll try to do that one because I don't want to yeah. want to pass on it. Okay, so it's uh, Steve Austin, uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter, and... and uh, Medea, Medea. Medea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would, uh, well, Medea is obviously the, the sexiest of the three. So I would, you know, that she's the one woman of the kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying here. Um, no, I would, uh, I feel, I feel like I would, I'd, I'd fuck Steve Austin cause he's got some moves, right? <laughs> And at the very least, he's a wrestler. He knows how to fake it. So. Oh. Wow. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would. Uh, all right. Uh, I would kill Dog the Bounty Hunter. Because uh, I, I feel like. I, like, I feel like that would make me a folk hero among people that he hunts. And so if shit ever really went down, I was like, guys, I saved you. Come on. I saved you from the from the bounty. And then that wasn't a good one. And then I would uh and then I would marry Medea uh because if I'm gonna if I'm gonna sell out, may as well do it all the way, right? So by the way, we have so many great wrestler names in the chat of the uh, yeah. <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys can read those, because I can't once they're gone, I can't see them, but they're so good. There's <laughs> Mango Man Savage. <laughs> Rocky Roddy Piper is my favorite. Rocky right. Roddy Piper. Oh my god. <laughs> big fan. I'm a big fan of Cone Senna. I like him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, John Ice Crema. Crema. <laughs> John Crema. <laughs> 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 By the way, tomorrow's contest is going to be uh, food-based wrestler names. So you're going to watch tomorrow and write yeah. them all night. Tomorrow's food-based wrestler names will be the contest. <laughs> Oh my God! I mean, I'm I'm a big I'm partial to Ben and Jerry Lawler, but I, uh... <laughs> 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 like a legal team. <laughs> King Cone Bundy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is, we have to clip this part out and use it as a standalone clip. This is too good. To All right, uh, Rachel, what else do we have coming in on the on the Super Chats? Uh, Razor had a comment. Can you smell what the Rockies wrote in? <laughs> I what the Rocky wrote is good. Okay. We, we had uh, K- Carrie give two bucks and said, Stone Cold signature move, Cold Stone Creamery. <laughs> Nice. All right, real quick, real quick. Jono's got to. Jono's got to pop out. So before yeah, we go, yeah. let, let's take about a Jono. Jono, can we get your plugs real quick before we get you out of here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm uh, at Jono Zalay on all the socials. That's where I'll be for the foreseeable future. Uh, and thanks. This is a really fun show. Thanks, you guys, for putting on. Thanks, thanks for doing it. No problem. And thanks, by the way, you got a couple more tips coming in. We'll email you with them. But uh, Ellen Shaw threw in five bucks and says Taurus calling bullshit on the Zodiac classic. Uh, nice. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, we'll, uh, we'll get to some more of those soon. Quick, right. quick note too, if we can possibly bring up our video, Scott, uh, I've been enjoying a beautiful sunset as the sun slowly descends into the horizon behind Scott. And I've never seen a sunset behind our audience before. So it's really beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, oh, nice. Hey, river man. 
it's an actual uh, sunset wow it's impressive yeah that's it's a real yeah you thought it was like one of the fake backgrounds yeah, <laughs> yeah. awesome and then i love that riverman is like at a river that's perfect <laughs> <laughs> it's on brand <laughs> yeah by the way ben you didn't say anything about my sunset my sunset is beautiful i can't believe you let me swipe on. over let me swipe over oh my god that's stunning that is stunning and also yeah just so he feels better i love bauer's sunset too yours is great <laughs> thank you yeah, the, thank you yeah by the way, i couldn't wait, see sun, my, steve sunset because it's the same color as his hair so i just thought that was his yeah. head but, but that <laughs> mine, mine set all the way now by the way it's finished <laughs> now, it's, now it's gone <laughs> Oh my uh, God, I'm having such right. a fun time right now. Yeah, yeah what, what else so we fun. got? Uh, what else we got on some chats before? And by the way, uh, let's remind uh, remind everybody what the game was. Uh, the game is five dollars for the most embarrassing thing you've ever had to buy in person. The most embarrassing thing you've ever had to buy in person is the game today. Yeah, so uh, most embarrassing thing you ever had to buy in person, and also by the way, some more general venues are coming in. Uh, so. <laughs> Tyler uh, Steven said, uh, for Steve, what flavor would you give Cold Stone Steve Austin? Um, I, what's his, what's like, what's his move? I don't actually watch wrestling, which is why I'm very surprised I was able to make. It, it's, it's Bud Light. Many... It would be Bud Light, maybe Coors Light. Would be, cause that's... <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. He does the beer thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ashley Wallace uh, threw in $3 and says, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Uh, I don't know about, I don't know if you're giving it to like the, as support for me killing him. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. No, we're going to Venmo uh, Dave, dog the bounty hunter three dollars from her tomorrow. That'll be hard. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, Dave Eisner uh, threw in five bucks. Says so Bowers can buy a normal sport coat, and so Rachel can get a liter literature degree from an online university, which, by the way, actually works because a literature degree from an online university and Bowers sport coats both cost about five bucks. So. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, and then Z Bunster, who our biggest supporter already, but, uh, having so much fun on this one says, fuck it. Best night ever. Thank you. Everyone, all capital letters on everyone and threw in $200 in support. Oh, really has been, this has been the, I mean, I thought, the, I thought when we were all roasting each other on the Josh Wolf episode might've been the hardest <laughs> I've laughed. This one, I couldn't even catch my breath. I, like, <laughs> amazing. So, although actually her moon was a pretty big laugh too. So, her moon. Her moon. <laughs> apology. Did Rachel just cor just correct my pronunciation? Her mispronunciation. <laughs> also, I would say that that tip from Z Monster, honestly, that take the cake, Roberts. That was so nice. Does cake count? Take <laughs> yeah. the cake, Roberts. It's a double. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cake, yeah, cake Roberts is awesome. Jake, Jake the cake Roberts, but take the cake. I like it. He did two. That's he did fantastic. two on that one, Ben. That was a double. Yeah, yeah, nicely it's, done. It's categories that'd be worth double points. So nice. That's work. right, man. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot of generals coming in. Um, so we've got uh, Frank Nataro, five dollars. Biggest laugh of the night goes to Rachel. And her hooked on phonics pronunciation challenge <laughs> continues. <laughs> also, I want to say that Frank Nataro, I loved him as the host of Street Smart. He was so still, great. Still, still a different last name, Ben. Still, still a different still guy. Last name. Still a different guy. <laughs> Okay. Well, Keep fuck. The way Rachel, Rachel pronounces stuff, we don't know if it's a different guy or not. She might have just said the We have um, Brett Steinbook gave $2 to Hulk Hagen Das. <laughs> okay. <Nice. All> right. <laughs> Thank you for the we support have, on that one. Uh, we have Candace B for Queen Rachel. You all know why. <laughs> uh, by the way i don't mean to interrupt you i know uh, i know jerry has to run uh he's got a you know he's got a family he's got to take care of uh jerry thank you so much uh for having us here uh we really really appreciate you being here um i know that you know uh you know he is jerry is not only a baseball player he is the jerry in ben and jerry's so it is uh, <laughs> a lot of work to do uh no thanks so much and is there anything you want to plug before you go no i mean uh i just wanted to to give a shout out to this forum. Uh, it's wonderful what you guys are doing. Uh, we appreciate it. People that, that can't go out and, and support comedy live. Uh, this is wonderful what you guys are doing. Uh, I love it. Keep doing it. And uh, 
you know, when baseball comes back, hopefully you guys will cheer us on too. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's Sounds good, great, Jerry. Jerry. Whatever, Thank if you. I ever find a job. So uh, if you <laughs> if you happen to see, I am unemployed. So I guess I get a portion of these tips too. <laughs> yes, yeah. we should. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, <laughs> should we tweet? Cut should we tweet in. at our favorite team to sign you? How does that work? <laughs> just, just lobby your 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 favorite GM. Yeah, absolutely. If everybody wants to email their GM and tell them to sign Jerry Blevins. That'd be awesome. That's right. Jerry, thanks so much. We love having you. You're Appreciate it. Thank anytime. you guys for for having me on. Have a good one. Have a great absolutely. night. You too. Excellent. All right, cool. Uh, Rachel, what else we got coming in? We've got um, Jalfi uh, donated a couple more euros and said hello, Bill Bowers Hicks, um, <laughs> and said that 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 his past comment where we were a bit confused he said he was referring to two judging a comic by the tips they get and where a comic gets a dollar tip with a note attached you owe me two drinks based on the two drinks oh, oh so yeah gotcha, so the, gotcha. that makes perfect all right that makes sense and i also i also love that uh uh it's you know bowers is channeling bill hicks both being like upset and ranting and also wearing all black so we appreciate it. Uh, I've got a couple of Venmos coming in also. Uh, Daniel Graves uh, throws in 10 bucks uh, and it's all ice cream and boxing emojis. Uh, so thank you very much for doing that. Um, oh, we got, that's a, we got some game entries coming in. Um, and then uh, Elizabeth Ann throws in five bucks. And I think she's making a joke as to whether or not I'm wearing pants under this because uh, I was joking about that at the show yesterday about uh mm -hmm. whether or not whether or not i was doing those shows without pants and then uh on the uh on the uh the vip thing i i stood up fully and then it was clear that i actually had pants so sorry everybody oh that's good i, did, I thought the vo the vip was something way different for a second yeah <laughs> <laughs> ohio strip club bowers not everything is an ohio strip club uh all right what else we got rich uh before we do We've the contest Yep, we've got um, Razor gave $5 and he said, go Padres and tell the Chargers to come back so I don't have to get this tax. Speed two euros, Rachel, you're a legend. Uh, <laughs> stripper liquor two dollars and says uh <laughs> sd sd live beats comedy central oh i love nice. it nice that is my that that is the fake profile i made up earlier though was stripper liquor so i should yeah that is <laughs> stripper liquor supported the show before we know that <laughs> um we have a lot coming in. Shelly uh, gave $5. My brother wishes me happy zombie Jesus day every year on Easter. I never have to wait long for Facebook to tell me how offensive that is. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, Richard Earl Deary, $5. Steve Hofstetter, now you have a new joke. Thanks to Rachel G. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Anytime um, someone else can write my material. Right, right. <laughs> Kate. Katie Weiner, five dollars for Queen Rachel because I can't pronounce anything to save my life. Too, I'll take <laughs> that. Uh, Jalfi, two euros. Rachel comes and says the real way to say her name. I don't what? know what that means. Ra Rachel comes and say the real way to say her name. Is Rachel? Okay. Right, yeah, it's just Rachel. Oh, I think they're saying that like it's amazing you know how to pronounce your own name at this point. Oh, that's, that's rude as fuck. Was. <laughs> that might not be what they mean that's just what i said <laughs> in fact that's where your head went <laughs> yeah. um we sorry have... i'm too distracted by the idea of chocolate chip cookie dolph ziggler but go ahead <laughs> we have ron gould five dollars general thanks for the laughs also Ooh. cm pumpkin spice swirl <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, he's a seasonal wrestler. Uh, White uh, girls love him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jen Winklepeck, 420, mint chocolate china. <laughs> uh, and then the last one I have, Laura Sparks, two bucks. How much for that VIP chat? Laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah. uh, a little more, uh. little more expensive. That'll be like three fifty. 
<laughs> I, have, uh, I have two more uh, wrestler flavors I've been thinking about. I would like to enter into the contest. Brett, the chip man tart. Oh, nice. <laughs> chip cherry Coke. What? Chip I'm... cherry Coke instead of Chris Jericho. I resign. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> First one was great. I also like that. Have we, has anyone given us Ricky Rude yet? <laughs> no. Rick Rude is. What was that? What was the, there? There was Andre the. Andre the Giant Peach was that one? That yeah, that was, the, no, that, yeah, was that, just, that, is, that is very stretching. All right. Uh, no, so we had that uh, in the chat. I saw that in the chat. I don't remember exactly what they said. Well, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. I was trying to think right, of how cool. to how to flip Andre the Giant. I couldn't do it. My head has been only thinking about flavor wrestlers for the last twenty five minutes. I haven't even really. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jennifer Kofed just threw in five bucks and said, I missed everything tonight, uh, being a parent and shit. Just wanted to pop in and say hi. Jennifer, sorry, you missed a doozy. Watch the replay. This is this is one of the best ones. Don't you mean don't you mean Jennifer Conehead? <laughs> I am uh, I am co-fed up with this game. So <laughs> uh, all right, do we have any uh, do we have any more or do we get to the contest? No, we get to the contest. All right, excellent. All right, I've got I've got a contest story real quick, and then we'll go to the contest. So uh, my most embarrassing thing I've ever had to buy in person uh, is last summer or two summers ago. My buddy Joey's like 15 years younger than me, big look, good, good looking dude. We were kind of a pool day, so just in our swimsuits, we went to, across the street to the gas station to buy ice. And so I'm in line with two bags of ice, and uh, he's just dicking around what he was doing. And I get to the counter, and he reaches his hand under my arm, and he drops a, a five-hour energy and a, a box of Magnum condoms on the counter. And he goes, get these two, babe, and then walks out the door. <laughs> 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 and, now, and now I'm worried. Now I, think, now I think the cashier's like, I wonder what the ice is for. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, recovery. <laughs> uh, gotta, gotta ice those hammies, I guess. But anyway, yeah, so that, that absolutely. Was, but I bought, I, but I did buy the fire injury and the condoms because at that point I was pot committed. It was, but it was very embarrassing. That was the most embarrassing I've ever bought. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Do we have? Uh, do we have? Before we do the, uh, do, do we do the game? Uh, do we have anyone in the uh, live studio audience that uh, that wants to play? Before we do the official contest. Um, <laughs> and if not, uh, let's take some entries that are not the paid ones yet, and then we'll do the rest. Okay. Um, so I've got some uh, unpaid ones. So we've got crashers. Last year, I bought 365 condoms for my son to take to university with him. I put a note saying, have a great year. <laughs> oh my God. Nice. That's a dad that believes in his kid. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Those things, I pictured I it don't... as a mom. Yeah. Condoms, wow, that's... condoms have, I think they're about a four-year expiration date. So like, that's particularly funny if you buy them for a freshman in college and just be like, hey, <laughs> here, here you go. So, this will cover you the whole way. I'm so sorry that Steve knows that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 idea, the idea that I make sure before I buy a condom to check the expiration date, because I'm not insane. No, no what he oh, says, you, 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 you have to throw no, some No, no, I know what Ben's trying to say, thing. but the reason I know that is because I don't buy expired condoms. That's important. Well, stop shopping for your condoms at the 99 cent store, Steve, and you won't have to worry about the expiration date. First of all, it is the dollar store. It's luxury. Don't give me this 99 <laughs> cent shit, okay? <laughs> what, what is a condom? That's what I'm confused by this whole thing. That's yeah, they, <laughs> it's a thing that some people put on vegetables, so that's why you don't like it. So. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, what else we got? Uh, That's why you got... bite them and spit them out into the cereal bowl. <laughs> yeah, that... <laughs> uh, we have Ashley Lay. Um, I was still a virgin. I had to buy a pregnancy test for a friend because she she knew the person at the store and didn't want her mom to know. Oh, shit. Yeah, that kind of stuff in small towns. Like, uh, I, uh, I, I had a friend who, who used to be a pharmacist in a small town. And uh, I, I was like, is that a little weird? She goes, yeah, it makes dating real tough because I know what everyone has. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't date chicks that work at the bank. They have no, have, have, they know exactly how much money you have. They're like, yeah. Are you going to take me to Applebee's, motherfucker? You got $8. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the paid entries. So, right. Heather Scott. 
Heather Scott said, I'm not sure if it counts, but paying for a cab home from the strip club with my guy friends who were drunk and kept telling the driver that she'd make a great stripper. I ended up tipping 25% and apologized to them profusely. That is, that counts. Uh, Being embarrassed by the other people with your purchase, that counts. Hmm. Uh, we have Jeremy H. Uh, at a 17 year old, at 17 years old, I bought hemorrhoid cream and stool softening suppositories for my grandparents from a girl I hope to date. I never asked her out. <laughs> oh. That's pretty good. Uh, We've got Jalfi, um, my ex-girlfriend, to settle a small argument, got to got me to buy her a specific dildo, one that I couldn't just take and buy. I had to go, I had to order it in and go back to get it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. That, is, that is like some 3D chess right there. That's what that is. <laughs> I'm going to need a bigger one. That's a special order I'm imagining. Here's a deposit. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, I've got one here on the Venmo from uh, Tyler Stevens says when I was a minor condoms and tampons neither were for me so I had to ask the store clerk where they were needless to say I didn't get the condoms Uh, (laughs) by the way I will say like I remember the first couple like the first couple times or not even couple times the first like probably two three years that I bought condoms I was always like embarrassed by it in, you know, like you're just the idea of like, oh, I hope nobody sees this. And then eventually I realized like, wait a minute, this means I'm having sex. Yeah, give me some fucking condoms. Here you go. Just put it down on the counter loud and proud. Like it, but it took me a while to realize that like, this is, this is not something to be ashamed about. This is like, not only is he fucking, but he's responsible. This is great. Yeah. Like it's almost, and it's every time, every time after Steve proudly slammed him down on the conveyor belt, the cashier then said, Good for you, sir. Would you like us to validate your parking now? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, okay, so what else do we have on the... <laughs> I was understand how you feel. <laughs> like, we don't say something uh, we didn't think was funny. Sometimes it doesn't land. I don't know. It's like, yeah, I'm in my it's, house. It's, it's weird. <laughs> Things don't land sometimes. It's fine. I was expecting Just a burn. Also. I was like, oh no. I was like, is he going to go back to expiration date? Is he going to say, is he going to be like, yeah, both times he's purchased those. I'm right. burning myself all in my head. And he was like, validate your parking. And I was like, validate my parking. Yeah, I, I was going to go. I, I was going to go the first two or three years you bought because then you turned 30, but I was like, ah, that's not worth it. I bet Ben has a super val- great validated parking line. <laughs> yeah. <but> I still <laughs> have <to> do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fool me once, motherfuckers. <laughs> Just also please notice when my joke didn't land, how I didn't turn into a Bill O'Reilly raging at the camera monster. That's <laughs> 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 Ben. That's the second joke that hasn't worked in three weeks. I have three a show that you motherfuckers look at me like I'm an idiot. So I finally snapped. I apologize. I love how you're making that our fault. <laughs> it is your fault. I don't think you understand how this all works. We laugh no matter what the fuck you say. That's the point. All right. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. All right. We'll do show notes after. Okay. So... <laughs> Uh, okay. I've been trying to conference so, call for three weeks. I'm like, fuck it, let's just talk about it right now because Ben's on the phone. All right. <laughs> Kristen Coates. Kristen Coates gives a $25 Venmo. And oh, says, nice. I just taken my mom home from the hospital. She needed a few things, so I told her I'd go grab them. I had to drive around town asking the stores if they had a toilet seat booster and incontinence pads. I was 25 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we also have one from Jane Stewart it says night before a half marathon, my dog was sprayed by a skunk. My items that I had to buy were men's underwear to wear while cleaning her off tomato juice, lube for chafing and caffeine packets. He's going to combine the two. Oh, that's bad time. These, these are really solid. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what else we got? Yep, so I've got a few more. So Carrie, her game is, and she says, please don't judge. When I was with my ex, I went to the Play Store and as a gift bought a purple eight-inch dildo. The cashier looked at me and smirked. I had to explain to her that it wasn't for me. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Uh, 
we have Stacy Luby. Um, I had to buy X lax and period pads from the store. The items wouldn't ring up and they paged over the intercom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And she said, who knew my face could turn that red? <laughs> that is, no matter, like, if it was embarrassing at all, the, that's like that's like the thing they write in, like, a shitty sitcom where they're just uh-huh. like, oh, and then pay, but then it, if it happens in real life, holy shit, that's way tougher. Uh, what else uh, we got? The last one I have is from Greg Smith. Uh, I was buying adult diapers for my grandma late one night and a girl acquaintance passes me and says hi i turned to explain and she was gone (laughs) (laughs) ever uh oh i think i think i just got the parking validation joke (laughs) (laughs) she was saying that like i don't really need condoms i was only buying something to get my parking validated was that the intent I so appreciate you trying to find the humor in it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) What I meant, I I joke was just that, and it's not a great one, but that you, you, instead of being embarrassed by condoms, acted almost just like an overexcited kid, like, I'm buying condoms, boom. And so the employee was like, that's great, sir. Do you want your parking validated? Like, you're being a child. Great. Can you leave the store now? It was not, it was a couple of minutes of a walk. My 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 interpretation of your joke was actually better than the joke. So, cool. so are we all caught up on the contest now? Uh, on the contest, yeah, I have a couple generals, but we can do that after. All right, cool. We'll do that after. Okay, uh, let's vote on the contest. Uh, so in the chat, vote which one was your favorite. Uh, there's so many good ones on this one, uh, as always. Although I cannot wait to hear all your food wrestler names tomorrow. Uh, okay. <laughs> So, uh, what, what's uh, Bowers? What's your vote? Well, I was going to go with the, having to buy the stuff from the girl that he wanted to date. That's my second one. I like that one a lot. But the, the, the combination of the four things, and including the caffeine and the lube, I thought was very funny. Whichever that was, the, the guy that was doing the, the marathon. So, he bought marathon stuff. And, yeah, that, that's my vote. The lube and the Yeah, that was, uh, well, a woman did it. And part of it was the men's underwear. So, yes. Okay. Yes. okay. So, that's a solid one. Uh, ben, what about you? That was my vote as well. The caffeine packets, lube, men's underwear. It's a pretty solid combination. Um, I buy it a lot, but I'm a dude, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, my vote, my vote doesn't matter then because you guys already have decided it. I will not be a tiebreaker. Uh, There were so many good ones. The stool softener was great. The paging over the intercom was great. Uh, That was, that was an awesome contest. So thank you guys for participating and uh, uh, the, uh, the skunk, wins so the after effects of the skunk in the marathon wins so excellent um so that was Rachel, not only an awesome contest that was a cold stone steve awesome contest <laughs> <laughs> um all right we're gonna make it a little easier uh so uh the winner uh the winner of the contest please uh email us uh the email address is at the bottom of laughfromhome.com uh, and, uh, you know, we'll match it up to your name so that no one can just cheat and get the free stuff. Uh, so, uh, yeah, send it in, uh, via email and we'll, uh, we'll send you the prizes. So thank you so much. Um, and, uh, with that said, let's catch up on the generals and then, uh, and then we'll say goodnight. Okay, perfect. So I just have a couple here. So, um, resort dog gave $2 and said, Jesus spelled backwards is sausage avocado Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Amintala <laughs> gave five bucks and said, word of adv- advice, guys, when buying something embarrassing, purchase a birthday card next to it so people think it's a gag gift. Ooh, oh, I like that a lot. That's a, life, that's a life hack from hell. That's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fantastic. The next time I buy all those condoms and get parking validation, I'll make sure to get a birthday <laughs> card. So <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and the last one here is Razor, uh, $5. Classic Fuck, Mary Kill. Betty White, Betty Page, Betty Rubble. Yes. Uh, thank <laughs> you so much. Uh, uh, you, okay. Uh, you marry Betty you White kill, so you, you can, kill. so you can, you marry Betty what? White so you can inherit her, inherit her money in three months. And then, uh. Oh, damn, the no, no. Oh, no. Betty White. <laughs> 
No, I would marry Betty White because she is wonderful and I'd like to spend as much time with her possible and she's going to live forever. Three months, uh, yes. I will kill Betty Rebel because she's a cartoon and so that's fine. And then I would also fuck Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> wrong? I don't know if I did it wrong. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but I'd be very careful because she's a national treasure. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Comedian right. destroys Betty White. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> <laughs> Come there, back it's wrong. ironic that there was a pitcher as our guest because there have been so many home runs hit this episode. This has been incredible. <laughs> Uh, this was, this was so much fun. Uh, Bowers, your new album came out today. Everybody should get Bowers' album. It's hilarious. I've seen it. I've seen the set. It's so good. Uh, please pick up his album. And not only that, but it really is true that, uh, you know, the iTunes chart, if a bunch of people buy it once, uh, then he will shoot up the iTunes chart. Uh, so, uh, you know, please do that. Go buy Bowers' uh, album right now. And then, uh, it'll, it'll raise up in the rankings. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Bowers, do you want to plug anything or did I, did I do your That's plugs? it. Bowersalbum.com. That's all I'm plugging today. Bowersalbum.com. I'm actually doing comedy on the show tomorrow. So good Ben, ben can not laugh at my actual jokes in real time <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, ben, uh, Ben Glee. Well, here, you take us out. I'll, I'll finish. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll do mine and then uh, you can take us home, Ben. Um, sure. So uh, the, the shows yesterday went so amazingly well. Um, I had fun uh, on, on every one of them. And by the way, last minute, uh, Venmo just came in from Ellen Shaw. Five bucks says Bowers redeemed. Uh, nice and done. <laughs> um, and uh, it was just it was just so amazing. I said it at the shows um, that like, you know, last night, like two comedians, that's that's our oxygen. And, uh, you know, to be able to feel like I could breathe again was amazing. And uh, thank you for everybody who showed up yesterday. And we're doing it again uh, Monday. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a full live show. Um, but also this weekend we have Daniel Muggleton, Brett Drock, and Ida Rodriguez doing full shows. I'm hosting all three of those shows. And Daniel Muggleton and I are working on a show. It's going to be a weekly show uh, where Daniel and I uh, just ad lib and take questions from the crowd and fuck around. It's called uh, Ask Us Anything. And uh, we'll be announcing that soon. So uh, pick up tickets to that as well. Um, you guys are so wonderful and supportive and I love it. Love that, Steve. I also love how you just announced the thing you said you're going to announce soon. Fair. So, <laughs> <laughs> that works pretty well. Um, I watched Steve's Late Show last night. It was absolutely hilarious and it was so cool. So please support the Nowhere Comedy Club. Go to NowhereComedyClub.com. Also, um, my podcast last week on Earth this week, my guests, in addition to Dr. Larry Burchette with an update on coronavirus from the front lines, but my guests are Chris Bowers and Steve Hofstetter uh, this yeah. week. Yeah! We just did it and it's either coming out in a couple hours or since it gets processed in the UK, maybe tomorrow morning because the guy is asleep. But um, it was hilarious and especially Bowers was hilarious and I hope everybody watching knows that <laughs> <laughs> because it's fun to do and he's a great sport about it but he's one of the funniest people i know the guy is such an original thinker so out of the box so different than anybody you'll see like it's very hard to find unique voices in comedy and bowers really is one of them there's a run on the podcast he makes us both laugh just absolutely for like five minutes about the things he doesn't do and do and doesn't like um so please go to bowersalbum.com and get his album it's gonna be an hour full of laughter. So please do that. And uh, thanks for being with all of us here, Isolation Nation. It's been a real great time today on the Social Distancing Social Club. And we will see you tomorrow with our guest, Steven Weber, pretty exciting. And uh, you can follow me at my new handles on all social media at Mint McMahon. <laughs> <Good night, everybody. laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,